is the actual typewriter used by Nick Joaquin. And this is likely an actual bottle of beer that he probably drank also. Now, he was fond of beer, but uh, probably not that same one. But yes, this is his typewriter. All right. We'd like to now honor the works of one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Filipino literary master, who is Nick Joaquin. Literary genius with works such as The Innocence of Solomon, a portrait of the artist as Filipino, and the woman who had two navels. To pay tribute to the inspiration of the collection, Nick Joaquin's works will be read by the beautiful Balikbayan G. Tonji, QTV's Jocas de Leo, and a Nick Joaquin family member, Bing Villegas. But before that, let's get to some authentic learnings about his works. Now, if there's one individual who the family of Nick Joaquin thought to be the best resource expert of his works and the life of Nick Joaquin, it would be Lito Zueta. Now, he is called Joaquines by his family, by their family, and we are, uh, we're not, unfortunately, we were supposed to have him here this evening. He, uh, last minute, he could not make it here tonight, so uh, I will go ahead and read some of his credentials and some of his writings based on Nick Joaquin. Now, Lito Zueta is the editor of the Filipino, Philippine Daily Inquirer and a teacher of literature and journalism at the University of Santo Tomas. This excerpt is an intro to Nick Joaquin by Lito Zueta. If Nick Joaquin were still around today, he would find the notion of his writings and person being banded around in fashion and accessory quite groovy and very hip. As he would often say when he was still alive, Sikato, no? But he could not have overlooked the paradox of the situation. For someone accused of romancing the past just for the sake of romancing the past, and by implication justifying the Spanish colonization of the Philippines, the reinvention of his writings and philosophy into fashionable merchandise is pregnant with irony and rich in meaning. Nick Joaquin embraced the cobwebs of the past. Now he is having a fashion makeover. He's not anymore clueless. But as, as Alicia Silverstone character would say, as if, we must remember that in the 90s, several writers at a conference in UP took Nick Joaquin to task for his cultural history and other writings that allegedly exalted the Philippines' Spanish heritage based on cozy notions of nostalgia and romanticism. In the same forum was Nick Joaquin's friend, F. Sionil Jose. Not a Hispan Hispanophile himself, Frank Jose rose to Nick's defense. You punks, he cried, how dare you criticize our greatest writer in English? If you could write but a tenth of what he has written, then perhaps you might earn the right to criticize him. F. Cione Jose was no admirer of Jose Garcia Villa, but the two, sorry, but the two have a common, a common denominator, and that's their admiration for Nick Joaquin. Villa said that Nick is the only Filipino writer with a real imagination, that imagination of power and depth and great metaphysical seeing, and which knows how to express itself in great language, who writes poetry, and who reveals behind his writings a genuine first-rate mind. For Nick's Hispanism, he was called a hopeless romantic and even anti-Filipino. But he never exalted Spanish heritage just for any Peruvian sense of nostalgia. He knew the value of the heritage because to discard it would be like discarding one's soul. He was a nationalist because he was a realist. I quote, To accuse the Spanish over and over again of having brought us all sorts of things, mostly evil, among which we can usually remember nothing valuable except perhaps religion and national unity, is equivalent to saying of a not very model mother that has given her child nothing except life. For in the profoundest possible sense, Spain did give birth to us as a nation, as a historical people. This geographical unit of numberless islands, this mystical unit of numberless tongues, bloods, and cultures called Filipino was begotten of Spain was a Spanish creation. Now numbered amongst the dust, Nick Joaquin will forever be remembered as a cherisher and evoker, like Bitoy in portrait, scooping the earth where the house of Calle Real in Intramuros once stood, now leveled to the ground by the bombs of World War II, and profaned by the banality of the post-war era and the forgetfulness of the Filipino. I quote again, 
By the dust and by the dust of all the generations, I promise to continue, I promise to persevere. With the choirs of heaven, Saint Nick continues to sing and exalt. To remember and to sing, that is my vocation.